So what we've got in store for today is we will continue HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but now we will begin looking at things in, from a new perspective. Obviously, by now, we're not pros at those three languages yet, but we do have enough knowledge. Uh, things are together enough that we can actually start to, to create, at least visually, um, very interesting uh, designs uh, and a very powerful mobile project. So we're going to um, uh, start one more time from uh, scratch, uh, but then we'll see very quickly that we'll be able to create very, a very powerful project very quickly. I'm also going to introduce some brand new tags we haven't talked about before, which are modern HTML5 tags that are very useful when we get, uh, as we get to the part about developing our Android app or our universal apps, our mobile apps. Let's go ahead and open Notepad again from with an empty document. So just take a moment to let's see if you can do this yourself now. Open Notepad, save it as HTML today's date, create your basic 10-line basic HTML file that we've worked with before, and then after that we'll we'll get started with new stuff. So see if you can use it or lose it. Okay, I'm done, so that obviously means you are too, right? Now, let me give you a few more minutes. Just the basic HTML file, like this, 10 lines, and that's all we really need. And then from there, we'll take it further, of course. everyone get the pink sheet to sign in. Okay, so if you're not quite done yet, let me just talk in theory. So what we're going to do uh, today is, starting with this, 
we are going to introduce several HTML5 specific tags. All of these tags we've seen so far basically have been standard HTML 1.0 tags. But as the latest standard has evolved, HTML5, new tags have been created to address issues that have, pro have, have, have popped up over the last 20 years of web design. If uh, I'm actually watching a little documentary, I haven't finished it yet. Um, I always forget his first name. His last name is Zeldman. Anyone know who I'm talking about? Zeldman in the world of web design? I forget his first name, but he's a pretty famous web designer. I had a little documentary about him, 30 minutes. Uh, Brian Zeldman, John Zeldman, I, I'm forgetting his name, Gary Zeldman. Um, and so this documentary is about talking about the evolution of the web in that for a long time it was very ugly and very kludgy, very hacky. Uh, we weren't able to create what our friends over in the graphic design building were doing. We're over here in the web design building and our stuff looks okay, but then in the graphic design building it's amazing stuff winning awards. And for a long time, web design just wasn't on par with graphic design. So the standards have been evolving, tags have been added, and uh, we're going to deal with some of the latest tags. Now, what that means is that since these tags are newer, they are not recognized from some of the, by some of the older web browsers. By older web browsers, I mean Internet Explorer 7, 8, 9, Firefox 5, Google Chrome, uh, two, Safari, you know, uh, four. These browsers have been evolving over the years. Right now, Internet Explorer is on version 12. Firefox is like on version 40 at the moment. Chrome is like on 48. Um, Safari, I think, is on 7, and Opera is like on 32 or something. So the latest versions of the web browsers will be able to handle the latest code that we use, no problem. Well, Part one of the class, we're ending up with a web project, a web app, a website that is mobile friendly. Remember the example website, which I'll bring up again. That's a mobile friendly website. It looks nice on a mobile device. It's not an app yet, it's a mobile website. So eventually, when we make it into an app, Android app, iPhone app, whatever, it's going to use the same code, the same HTML5 code, and therefore it's going to run on a, on a device. And these devices are much newer, oftentimes, than your. Uh, than your desktop. How often maybe do you replace your phone compared to your computer? Uh, maybe you get one of these when your contract is up every two years or so, so you've got the latest. Maybe you do hold on to one that's three years old, four years old, but maybe you've got a computer that's five years old, six years old. In any event, we're going to be looking at the latest code, the latest standards, which does, say, which does mean that yes, perhaps some of the oldest devices and web browsers will be excluded, but there was an excellent article that I've taken to heart that came out years ago called To Hell with Old Web Browsers. Because, you know, are we always going to try to accommodate the oldest web browsers, the oldest computers hold, being held back by technology? That's part of one of the reasons why Microsoft has gotten a bad rap, because they're always trying to accommodate way back to Windows XP, way back to Windows 98, way back, you know, just this huge the, the good and the bad of Microsoft is that they're a big company that, that helps and sells to a lot of people, but the bad of it is that they're a big company that deals with a lot of people. So they have a lot of installed user base. On the other hand, Apple, every few years they've got a brand new OS system and they say, oh, your computer's too old for it. Get a new one. And people do. So one is not worse, one is not best, just different. That's the way it is. And with uh, the latest... Um, mobile devices, these kind of auto-update on their own, you might not even notice and suddenly, oh, I've got OS 9. How many of you got OS 9 uh, Wednesday? How many of you hate it? Usually that happens. Now, Android. How many of you have the latest Android 5 point whatever? You might not know, but you know that it works. It's got the latest. The icon's changed. You probably got a new version of it. So the point is that we're going to use the latest. So here, if you've got my a document sort of like mine, we're going to start adding uh, brand new tags that, are, that weren't available before. So within the body tag, actually, I'm going to delete, if you wrote exactly what I wrote, I'm going to delete the hello world for the moment. I should probably comment it out, but I'm going to delete it. And uh, we're going to start adding some new tags that will help us give meaning to our document. Uh, these tags have a visual representation, but also a meaning. The body tag means something the 
title tag means something. We're going to add a brand new tag here, and its meaning will be what's contained within this tag is a screen full of content. What's contained in this other tag is another screen full of content. And in this other tag, another screen full of content. Basically pages, different pages of a web page, or different pages of an app, different screens of an app. The home screen, the login screen, the high score screen, all of these will, will be in their own screen. And we can define all of that by using the brand new section tag, which has a pair. There's a section of our website, a section of the app. This section could be our login screen, could be our high score screen, whatever our app or website is doing. So we'll say so far we've got one section. In a section, so we'll tab in there, this is a whole, think of this as a whole screen full of content. In this particular section, uh, as an example, many of our apps nowadays they have, a, so for example, let's say a Facebook or Instagram, many of them have a top section, a center section, a bottom section, so top, bottom, middle. Um, and so there's a tag for the top section, the center section, and the bottom section. I should be careful about my terminology because a section is a whole screen full. Let's call it a top area, a center area, a bottom area of a section, which is a screen full. Uh, so the top area is our header block. Everything that is on the top section, like the title of the app, the nav bar, you know, the top area of an app or a website, that's going to be inside of the header block in the header tags. These tags borrow a bit from graphic design in that they have some names and, and such related to print, which I always thought was a bit odd because this is the web, it's a little different than print, more flexible perhaps, but they adopted these familiar names and they've stuck. So the next area of our screen, of our section, we will call article. This is one of the ones like, well, article, like a newspaper? Yes and no. We will use article in the sense that it is the central section of our, of our app. Top section and header, which is the navigation stuff. Central section, which is the main content area. And then bottom footer area, which could be, you know, a little scrolling information at the bottom or a copyright notice or just some section at the bottom which we will then call footer. So this is the new concept. A section is a screen full of content. Let's make notes here. So I'm going to add the HTML comment tag. I'm going to add it off to the edge over here. You can add it above or below, but I'll put it on the edge here to keep my line numbers the same. A section is a screen full of content. A screen full of content. So you can also think of it as a page in an app or website or web app. Screen full. Is that how you spell screen full? Screen full. Section, a screen full of content, like a page in an app or a screen in an app. Header is the top section of a screen. Usually uh, for navigation elements. So buttons at the top to go from the home screen to the about screen to the contact screen to the order screen. Navigation elements at the top of the screen. That's a pretty common idiom. It would go in the header block, in the header 
um, section, I don't mean section, in the header, what did I call it? In the header um, area? Is that what I called it? In the header area, the article area, the footer area, the top area of a screen. article is the main content area. So everything else about the app. This is where you're, let's say we're building the next Instagram app. Well, this is the part where you would see the, the pictures, uh, everyone's new picture loading up and their comments and, and, and the direct messages you have. So it's the main content area of an app or a website the article. And then the footer. The bottom area of a screen. And it's up to you what to put down there, but we could have more navigation elements down there. We can have more, more icons, more buttons to navigate with. Uh, we can have messages appear down there. Um, you know, let's say you have something that rises up from the bottom to alert you of something, or from the top, but a bottom area. So, bottom area, just um, down there, like for we can say for info, informational elements, feedback, question. Your Technically, you don't have to have an article in a section. The, the tags can exist independently, yes. But we're going to use it in this way to get the best results. So in theory, if we have these sections, uh, or all of these tags, that is, this could technically be a screenful of your app. And so if we want another screenful, we would duplicate that and have another section. Duplicate it as many times as necessary to have more sections. We could do it manually, copy and paste, or we could get more advanced later with JavaScript to dynamically create these as necessary. Whatever we write in HTML is, is fixed. When we save it and run it in the web browser, it exists at that moment. We created it. But via JavaScript, we can create or destroy elements, any HTML tags, any CSS code. We can create it or delete it dynamically with JavaScript. That's oftentimes what's happening on a website or app nowadays. You press a button, and JavaScript runs to build a section at that moment. Not all 40 sections, not all 40 pages of your app exist at that moment. They can be created programmatically via JavaScript, via triggers that happen when you click you know, send a text message. A brand new section is created with a header, article, footer, etc. In the beginning, we'll create them manually, and then later on, we can get more complex. And so, let's put a little bit of content within these areas. Up on the header, that's where I'm going to back up and, and add my h1 tag. Let's just say that this app is called my app. I'll give it some cool Web 2.0 spelling also. So this is my app. Heading 1. The thing about headings is, I might not have mentioned it previously, but headings, depending on the heading, depending on h1, h2, etc., they also have a meaning. Uh, for example, heading 1 in our context has the meaning that it's up on the header, that it's the biggest, most prominent text on the screen. Oftentimes, that's what you see in an app. You've got the Facebook text at the top, the Instagram tag text at the top, right? The text of the app, the name of the app at the top. Uh, let's go inside of the article, the main content area, and therefore here we will use heading 2, because we've already used heading 1 at the top. And let's say that what our app is, um, 
it's like an app to teach you HTML. So we'll have some text here. Learn HTML. Five. We'll write a simple paragraph. Our app teaches you HTML5 the easy way. We're just putting some content. Let's say we had another section. Uh, let's say we had another block of content in our in our article in our main content area. So I would mark it as heading three. Learn HTML. Five and here we'll say instructor Victor. If at least one person in the world renowns you, are you world renowned? So I'm just adding a little content to the main content area, which is the article. I'm using heading two and then heading three uh, because they're different um, areas, or different sections. I know that's such a generic term, but think about it in terms of the syllabus. On the syllabus, we've got heading one at the top here, big and bold, most important at the top. Then we've got heading twos. Uh, we might have a heading three, and then at the bottom, heading four, etc. So these different areas of my syllabus can be marked with different headings. In the footer, then, we'll add logically H4. And just for the for fun, we'll say copyright 2015. I want to add the copyright symbol so we can actually uh, create symbols in HTML, uh, emoji and such. Uh, so one basic symbol we can create is the copyright symbol. So to create the copyright symbol, we're going to write this very specific code here, the ampersand, which is shift 7 then the word copy and a semicolon. It should italicize. That will then be translated to the copyright symbol. Ampersand, copy, semicolon. So see if your code looks about like mine, save it and run it. Let's see what we've got so far. We're still a ways off, but we're building a foundation to create our web app, uh, our mobile, our web app, and then our native app. My code so far, 23 lines or so. See if you save it and run it. It doesn't quite look perhaps like the promise of this is a screen full, like an app, and, and what about the top bar and the bottom bar and all of that. We're not quite there yet. We're laying the foundation, the groundwork. Remember, the HTML is the content layer. The HTML uh, code is what will show your content, basic structure, next way to make it look nice with a real uh, bar at the top with a gradient and drop shadows and all of that, that's the presentation layer, CSS. And then we've got, well, I want to click on a button and I want to, to go from this screen to another screen, from one section to another section, that's the JavaScript. So the behavior layer. But this is what it looks like so far. Uh, again, it's not quite as impressive yet, but we're laying the foundation. So does everyone have Something like that. Anyone need a little help so far? Okay, if this is our first screenful of this website, of this app, let's create another screenful of content. This is our first screen, like a welcome screen, let's say. 
let's say we'll have another screen for lesson one. So based on what we've already written, we'll do it the long way first. Yes, we can copy and paste, but we'll do it the long way first. And then we'll um, do it easier ways later, of course. But that means we've got a we've got section and notepad plus plus. If you click on a tag, remember it shows you its pair. That's just a single click. I click on slash section, which goes back here to section to tell me uh, this is a screen for a, a section of my of my app. So then that means I'm on line 21 here. I need a new line 22. And just again for practice, I'm going to create a new section, a new screen full of content with a header, an article, and a footer. So section slash section that will create a new screen for our app. I want a top area, which is header. And notice it's also in this order. Header, article, footer, logically. If I were to put the footer right after the header, that might not give you results that you're looking for, because suddenly one logical element is in the wrong place. After the header, we've got article. And then at the end of the page, we've got footer. So this, these are new tags, but they still use the same syntax in that they have a pair. And then within the tags, I add uh, content. So we've seen P tags, and then there's the text in between P. We've seen headings, we've got text in between headings. But these are sort of like larger elements, larger um, units of our project. We can have a bunch of content in the header, in the article, and the footer. Up on the header, eventually we're going to have navigation buttons, and in the article we can have scrolling pictures, and in the footer we'll have uh, a copyright notice, let's say. So continuing on what we've already seen, let's also create another heading 1 here. I can reuse heading 1 here. I'm not going to continue to go then heading 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here I can restart my numbering of logical heading numbers because I'm in a new section. I'm in a new screen of content. So let's say this at the top is lesson one. In the article, <coughs> let's say the body tag. I'm just going to put a little bit of content, not so much. And actually, in, inside the main article, uh, I'm done with the, with the content here. I'm going to skip down to the, to the footer. And in the footer, I'm, I'm going to use, again, a heading 4. The reason for that is because um, I'm going to continue to have a copyright message at the bottom. Um, and I could later decide to have more heading three, uh, uh, heading three and such, within the main article. So I'm kind of looking ahead a little bit. Yes. If you're going to continue to put the uh, copyright, can you make that in an uh, ID or the copyright? You mean the copyright symbol itself? Um, that that whole text copyright? Um, there are ways that we can store that in a variable in JavaScript, for example, and then reuse it over and over. That would be a more efficient way, because then we change the variable and it would auto-update throughout our app. Right now we're doing it the long way, the dumb way, but later on we can do it the smarter way. That's good forward thinking. Later on we can get more efficient with, with variables and such. An ID wouldn't quite work because that's really much more an ID related to class, which is much more for CSS presentation. So this would be either content or behavior later.
this is enough for the moment. Let's save this and run it. We've got a brand new section, therefore, in theory, a brand new screen of content. Sounds exciting. And then with a brand new screen, new stuff to see. We save it and we run it, and what's the result? It's all run together on one screen. Again, where's the promise of different screens? This is supposed to be one screen of content, and then taking it to this other screen of content. Well, we're getting there. We're still laying the foundation. We're going to be very anticlimactic. We're going to build it up little by little. Um, did this work all right for everyone so far? It is going to look like this. Black and white, just long, all my text there. It's not going to be separate screens yet. That's coming. So we're laying the foundation, we have different sections. And here's, the, here's where the magic comes in. We've, we're working with HTML, we can work with CSS and JavaScript. Um, we're going to deal extensively in this class with something called jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile is a JavaScript library. So what that means is JavaScript has, let's say, a hundred commands we can use, a hundred methods, remember our terminology, such as alert or prompt. Um, it has a bunch of built-in commands, JavaScript. And we can write a command in JavaScript to redesign the look of our project and to give it a bunch of functionality. Someone's already done that. Someone's already written JavaScript codes that will quickly create a mobile app looking project. It won't do all the work for you, of course, but it'll give you a starting point. And that's what jQuery Mobile is. jQuery Mobile are JavaScript-like commands that will quickly create a mobile-friendly project. That's the goal of, of the jQuery Mobile code, of the jQuery Mobile team, which is an international team of web developers and designers that want to, wanted to create a, a, a way to create mobile apps quickly. I don't want to rewrite my code over and over and over. I want to do it quickly. We're going to see that with JavaScript, we would have to write a command that is, let's say, 40 characters long. And we can accomplish the same thing with 12 characters in jQuery Mobile. Um, so basically, jQuery Mobile is shorthand for JavaScript. But jQuery Mobile is not built into is not accessible by default. Web browsers nowadays can handle HTML, CSS, and JavaScript no problem. Those languages are built into the browsers nowadays. We're going to access jQuery Mobile, which is not built into the web browsers just yet. Maybe it will be built in on the next version of Firefox. Who knows? It's such a popular library. So in order for us to access all of the power of jQuery Mobile, now we're going to access an external JavaScript file and it's accompanying CSS file. Remember, we've dealt with embedded, we've dealt with inline, embedded, now we're going to deal with external. We're going to access jQuery mobile files that are on the internet so that our project right here will then uh, suddenly get upgraded to be uh, mobile friendly. So what we'll need to do is let's back up to the head block. We're going to write something here. You need to write it exactly as I write it. It'll be a little complicated, so make sure you've written everything that I'm going to write. And of course I'm going to provide my code, my code so you can double check it. So this is going to be a tag that is a, um, a single tag, like the meta tag. Actually, just to doesn't quite matter where we put it, but I'm going to put it right after the meta tag. New line 5, and this is link. It's a single tag, self-closing. And this is not the link to link one button from one page to another or to go to a website. This is to link this document to a CSS file. So inside of the link tag, we need various attributes. The first one is rel. What's the relationship between this link and this document? Equals. 
quotes, style sheet. This is a style sheet that we're linking to. After the quote, href equals quotes. So now we're going to say, where is this style sheet? We're about to link a style sheet to this document. Where is it? It's on the internet, which has pros and cons. Because if we have no internet connection, suddenly our project will look plain black and white. If we have an internet connection, our document will look like a mobile app. Later on, we will download the file and make it part of our project so that we don't have to worry about an internet connection. For the moment, we'll connect to the online, re uh, the online version. That means we need to type HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash we're going to connect over to the jQuery project which is the parent project of jQuery mobile jQuery's slogan is write less do more so again write a short jQuery command to replace a long JavaScript command and there's lots of jQuery commands that will also let us do things that are pretty complicated with plain old JavaScript so jQuery is related, uh, jQuery mobile is related to jQuery, which is related to JavaScript. Um, so we're connecting to the jQuery server, and then we're saying slash mobile, mobile, slash. There's different versions of the code. It comes out every once in a while. At the moment, we'll just use version 1.4.5. Slash jQuery mobile. I'm sorry, jQuery dot mobile. Dash one point four point five point min point CSS. There's the code right there. Go to the internet, go to code.jQuery.com. That's a Q, jQuery.com, slash, let's get the mobile version, slash, version 145, 1 1.4.5, slash, jQuery.mobile, dash, 1.4.5.min.tss. That is going to let us access the jQuery mobile CSS file. Previously we created a CSS selector that redefined the look of a div to make it a yellow background. We wrote some CSS code to redefine the look of an h1 tag to make it red or whatever we did. Here we have a library, we have a CSS file that's already designed that has a bunch of code, hundreds of lines of code that redefine our project that take the section tag and make it look like a certain thing, that take the header tag and make it look like a real header, that take the footer and make it look like a real footer. It's already done for us, which of course we can further refine to make it look exactly like how we want. But here this will be our starting point. But we're not quite done yet. This is only the presentation layer. This is how does it look. We need now the behavior layer. We need some JavaScript files here to actually make it act like a mobile app, like, a, like an Android app. So next line. We're going to use the script tag. And recall previously we've used the script tag and it has an opening and a closing tag. I'm going to keep it on one line, but previously we divided it into multiple lines because between those script tags we wrote our own JavaScript. Well here we're going to use the script tag in a different way to, to connect to, to reference, and to reference the jQuery mobile, the jQuery JavaScript code. So within the script tag it needs an attribute, not within the tags, in the tag, it needs an attribute. This one is src equals. 
And in this SRC, we will then tell it, use this file on the internet. There's going to be another long address similar to that. HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash as I said jQuery mobile is related to sort of a child of jQuery so first we need to say let's load the jQuery library give me all of the the power all of the code of jQuery first and then we'll say now give me the power all of the abilities of jQuery mobile so first we're saying give me the jQuery file which is jQuery dash one dot eleven dot two dot min dot js very important there that's a JavaScript file don't write CSS there because it's not CSS it's JavaScript so go to the web go to this server access this file jQuery dash one dot eleven dot two dot min dot js js there not an i or an l js So if we had left it at this point, now we would have a we would we would have access to the jQuery library that gives us a lot of cool um, shortcuts in JavaScript. But we need one more JavaScript library. So the next line, again, we'll write the script pair. Again, it needs an attribute, src, quotes. And basically, we're going to write what we had in line 5, but slightly different, which is http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile slash 1.4.5 slash jQuery dot mobile dash 1.4.5 dot min dot js up here we're accessing the CSS half of jQuery mobile and here we're accessing the JavaScript half of jQuery mobile both of those are necessary one for your project to look like a web app, one for it to behave like a web app. And we need jQuery mobile found uh, we need jQuery foundation for jQuery mobile to work. That's why it's written in this order. Yeah. Yeah, these three lines basically are going to be in every in every program that we create. Yes. So if we save it and run it, we're still not there yet, but let's see if we're on the right track. Save it and run it, and it should look something like this. Let me compare. This is is this is it before any of that jQuery mobile stuff. This is it after. It still doesn't look like what I think, but at least you should get kind of a plain-ish gray background instead of white and your font becomes a more plain Arial font instead of a Times New Roman font. And also we lost a little bit of an edge border on the left side, but don't worry yet. That's how it should look like so far. You're still going to see page 1, section 1, and page 2, section 2. They're still running together. We're not quite there yet. At least it should look something like that, not like this. What's that? It looks perhaps a little more readable. This font maybe is a little better, and we're getting there. We still need to work, but um, anyone need a little help before we go further? All right, here's my code again. Hopefully you can read it, and let's see if we get that working.
One thing I noticed uh, that might be useful to you for the moment, uh, it seems that if you try to run the project in Chrome, it's not going to quite work because it's of security issues. That we are on our local computer and we're trying to access a project on the internet and Chrome might freak out and not let it. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. If you try to run this project in Chrome, this is going to keep spinning and it's never going to work because it doesn't want to access an online resource because it might be thinking there's a there's a... I don't know, spammers out there, let's be careful. So it doesn't let us doesn't let it work on Chrome. We'll avoid this, of course, later. Once we download those files and keep them locally in our project, we'll get to that later. I want to do a little bit more, then we'll take our break. I want this to actually start to look like a real pages and such. So uh, here's uh, the next trick. Uh, we are going to be using sections and headers and all of this, but then now we need to use... Um, these attributes, we're going to add attributes to our various tags that then will make sense to jQuery mobile and jQuery. Uh, or that is, they will make sense because of jQuery and jQuery mobile. So let's go to line 11 where you've got your section. And on line 11, in the tag, I've noticed a few people here, be careful when I say in the tag, I mean inside of the tag before the angle bracket. In the tag of section space, we will add this attribute called data dash role equals quotes. HTML5 has a new feature where we can embed simple bits of data within the tags to do further interesting tricks. So 
we can have data dash role, we can have data dash author, data dash coordinates. We can kind of make up tags here. They all start with data dash something. And then inside of the quotes, we can put different things. I'm using this right now in one of my apps. Uh, I'm working on this app to uh, calculate your miles per gallon. So I'm using data dash note to save a simple note embedded in the HTML code to access it via JavaScript and this whole thing. But we're going to use data dash role, which makes sense once we've got jQuery mobile, and we will then say page. At the very least here, let's save it and run it. Let's see our results. Right, write this inside of the tag. Make sure you've got angle brackets around that. If you wrote data roll outside of it, it won't work. In the angle brackets. It looks the same. Wait a minute, what happened to the lesson one stuff? It's on page two. How do we get to page two? We don't have a button to go to page two yet. Well, we're getting there, aren't we? So we're looking at page one, section one. Um, all of the content of section one is visible here. Section two, the, the code is still there, obviously. If you look at the code, Firefox still sees your code for page two. But now it's not visible until we actually navigate to it. And so here, this is the content of page one. It still doesn't look like a real page yet, uh, a real screen. But with data dash roll page, it's getting there. Let's do a little bit more, and then we'll get to the break. I didn't get anything like you. Let me let me finish my thought here, and then we'll do the break, and then I'll and then I'll help you. Uh, let's do here on header. If it worked, let's go to line twelve where we've got header, and we'll add data dash roll header. Basically, we're going to add a data role to each of the section, header, article, and footer. And then that, because of jQuery mobile, will then look like the app. So let's now go to article, line 15, data dash role equals, this time is content. The role of this article is to display content. The role of the header is to display the header. The role of the section is to display a page. The role of footer, so footer needs a data role, data role footer. Now save it and run it. Let's see, if I save it and run it, look at that. I have a top area that has been marked, separated from the rest. The text now is up in the center. I've got a, an area in the main part of my app. Now a little bit of the padding here, finally. That's content in there, and then a footer. I expect footer to be at the foot, but we'll get to that. But that's been separated also with a little bit of a graphical elements, a little line here, and it's centered for me, and so forth. That all works because we've got two things. We've got the J we've got the block of scripts and links, part one, and part two is the data role. So don't do don't do this. Just one moment. Don't do this. But if you remove that stuff up there and run it again, it goes back to normal. Even though data role is still there, act like a page, act like a header, act like a content, because I took out all of that meta content, that head content, it goes back to normal. I don't know what data role means, I don't know what content means, but after we've added all of those jQuery things, then it looks like an app, kind of, close. Yes? That, that thing before, just, just the page, what, what triggered that? 
This right here? Because it's, it like did it after that piece. Right? It did it after that. Um, we had piece of that section. You mean the interval page? Yeah, we put that stuff up on the screen, right? And then it did the page. Yes. We had we had the content. Um, we had the, the content code. What triggered it was this is this has a meaning because of jQuery and jQuery mobile. Okay. So when you remove those things, then this no longer has meaning as we saw, and then it just goes back to plain black and white. But what made it do it after it put that stuff up there? Was that part of the the jQuery? No, let's be specific. When you say stuff, because I want to understand what's stuff. Are you saying after we put data roll page, it suddenly happened? Yeah, you, you just had data roll page in there, yeah. and then we we did it, and it broke the page after this stuff, right? After the instructor went to it, it caused it to do it after. Everything um, that is visible here is because it's part of the section. Right. So, so it did it after the section. No, it's in the section. This is the section, data role page, and everything that I've seen here, instructor Victor, sure. learn from world renown, HTML, all of that is in page one. Here's page one. Sure. And then it broke the page. Yes, because then the section ended. Okay, so at the end of the section, that triggers a page. That triggers to create a new page, yes. Okay, gotcha. Data role page, section, that's a whole new section. We've got another section of content, another page of content. That's what broke it between pages. Yes. In the three and the three school site, when the uh, role content is deprecated, um, is there an alternative? Does it, I've seen they're using main for something that they don't yeah. even listed in there. Yes. Um, you, you're, what you're saying is true, and we will do it the more newer way in a moment, but I just want to show it this way, the, the traditional way deprecated. Uh, technically, this code is a little bit obsolete, data role content. I'm just showing it right here to be consistent with the other code so far. And then later on, we'll use the more modern code. Another hand here. Okay, um, we're getting to the break in a moment. So if it worked for you at this point, it's, it looks kind of like mine. Good. We're still, of course, a little bit, a little bit away, uh, a little bit away from what we where we want to be. But if it kind of looks like mine, sections of content and centered text and such, we're on our way. I'm going to put my code so far as it is into the network drive in case you want to copy, and I'll start answering people's questions if they need it. It's 710, we'll be back at 720, and we'll proceed. Yes. jQuery. jQuery includes both JavaScript and CSS. It's really about what can it control. So you can say that jQuery can control the HTML and the CSS and the JavaScript. It's kind of esoteric to explain, but it makes sense as we do it. But JavaScript and jQuery and all that's purpose is to affect things, to control things, and change to program them. Because at first I thought it was just a library of um, JavaScript commands, and I think they redesigned it to Yeah, so that's happening because we've got, remember, jQuery Mobile JS and jQuery Mobile CSS. That's where the redesign look of it's coming from, from the CSS file, not the JS, JS file. Okay. I just like double check the link because you got everything in the document. Well, it looks a little
If you think about it as a website, then it is, then it is a page. Yeah, this is a page. I was thinking like a page. 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 You don't like to skip a page, bro. Mm -hmm. If I skipped a new page, <laughs> well, this is the thing that sometimes these terms, yeah. they're so generic and such, like I want to say section, this, the header section and the footer section, but I shouldn't say that because we have a tag called section that's going to confuse us. Yeah. 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 Say um, the link here, the second one, uh, what it is. Uh -huh. I didn't have exactly the same one. Yeah, missing some. Yeah, missing some link. It's like uh, the first one is in the link, right? The link of the page, the link of the mobile, and then the data one. That's where the, the data one yeah. uh, library is at, and I'm just missing some link. Let's see lines again. I mean, how would somebody like me know where to go and what that does? I mean, well, uh, remember in the syllabus I've got a couple of book recommendations, yeah. and one of them is Sam's Teach Yourself jQuery Mobile in 24 Hours. So every tutorial, every book is going to tell you that over and over. Add these three lines, and they mean this. Oh, I see. Use them like this. Okay. So I'm just. I didn't look at it in the bookstore uh, inside. Thank you.